What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here and you know what time it is. It is finally time to rank all the Nightmare on Elm Street films against each other. Yes, over the last couple weeks I've been going through all the films and popping out reviews on my channel. If you want to know my thoughts on any specific movie in general, I have the playlist and the link down in the description below so you can click on that and go check them out. Today it's just we're just pinning them against each other. You're going to find out where they lay in the ranking of the nine, nine Nightmare on Elm Street films that we have, including including the remake. So like I said, we're going to talk about all of them and you're going to find out why they're at, where they're at in the list and everything. And this is just my thoughts and my opinions. That means I would love to hear from all of you down below in the comment section, share your ranking of the Nightmare franchise. So without further ado, let's get down to this list. Roll it. <laughs> So there's nine Nightmare on Elm Street films to talk about, and I don't think it's any secret which one is at the bottom of the barrel. This film is absolutely atrocious, and like one, like I said, in terms of comparing it to the other films in the franchise, it's no doubt. Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, is absolutely the worst one to me. This is like kind of just a joke, silly film. It's almost like a parody of itself. I don't like any of the Freddy performances, one-liners. None of that stuff really lands for me. The acting is really bad, so just across the board, there's a lot, a lot of negatives weighing this film down, and it's the one film that I could erase from this franchise, and it wouldn't bother me at all. Coming in at our number eight spot is going to be A Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake. This one from 2010, really the the only reason it's not higher up on this list i don't think this is a bad remake or a bad film in general it's just competing against some other nightmare and film nightmare films that i find to be either better in terms of story characters and final girls the kills robert england performance like I said this one's different because we have jackie earl haley in here so just comparing it to the other ones it's just really hard and that's why nightmare on elm street the remake is sitting here at this number eight spot basically just because like i said it's going up against some other titans in the same franchise now we have our number seven spot and this one actually kind of hurts my heart to put this at number seven it was kind of hard like my top three were nailed down for this ranking and my bottom one was nailed down but pretty much the four through seven spot i was like oh which one's gonna go where and number seven is gonna be wes craven's new nightmare yes wes craven returning to the franchise trying to revitalize the freddy krueger franchise bringing a new flavor a new style with a meta story a new redesigned freddy and definitely a different take compared to the previous films it didn't really land critic wise but this is a film that has a cult following and really has a lot of fans and I can understand why like I said Wes Craven's New Nightmare is still a very strong film and a really good entry in this franchise now number six we have Nightmare on Elm Street part four the dream master yes this one we have Tuesday night coming in to recast Patricia Arquette's character but we bring a lot of our dream warriors characters back they get dispatched in this one and they end up passing the torch on to Alice which is one of my favorite final girls that's a big reason why this one's at the spot where it's at All also, you got to understand, this is one of the best soundtracks out of any of the 80s Nightmare on Elm Street films. I'll give you candy, give you diamonds, give you pills, give you anything, anything, anything. Run away, running from this nightmare. So yes, after I just embarrassed myself singing live on YouTube in this video, yes, Dream Master has an iconic soundtrack and some really great characters and probably some of the coolest kills in the franchise too. So Dream Master has really that first blend of that MTV Freddy. This was him really going off into pop culture. Freddy Krueger was taking off all across the world. So yeah, this one is a really special film and deserves this number six spot on my ranking. Coming in at our number five spot is going to be Dream Child. This might be a controversial ranking or placing for a Dream Child, but it's no secret that I've always told people Dream Master and Dream Child that's like a sliver. I like just a little bit prefer Dream Child over Dream Master and it's basically because of the risks they take with this film in terms of the story and also the climax of Alice's character. I love Alice's character and the story arc she goes through in Dream Master and Dream Child, so that is another reason why I hold this film in very high regard. Yes, there's some very bad child acting in this film, and it has some moments that it's just uh, it's very cringeworthy, but still, Dream Child is one that I highly respect and one that I return to very often, and like I said, earns this number five spot 
on my ranking. Rolling in at the number four spot, we have Freddy versus Jason, probably the heaviest nostalgia one on this list because this was the first one of Freddy Krueger and Jason film that I ever saw in theaters. This was my birthday movie that year. And to see these two horror icon titans go at it on the big screen really was fantastic. So this is one that just cements a certain time in the horror community that I just love. And I love a lot of the stuff with Freddy versus Jason. This is a dumb popcorn flick that absolutely delivers on that aspect. Is there a lot of dated CGI? Yes. Is there some story elements that don't match up? Probably. And some lackluster acting, but I can forgive all those things basically because of the amazing experience I had with this film. And like I said, two of my favorite slasher icons going at it on the big screen. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. Now we're here at the top three, the bronze medal, silver medal, and gold medal from my favorite in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. But before we get down to those three films, please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel because I greatly appreciate all the support and have that notification bell poke so you're notified anytime I drop a video and everything that will also keep you updated with the channel. So now... Let's get down to number three. The bronze medal is going to go to Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street, the very first film, the film that started it all in 1984, introducing us to Heather Langenkamp, introducing us to Johnny Depp and Robert England for the first time. So this is a really special film. This is the film that really laid down the foundation for what the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise would be, and they would greatly improve on this formula in later films. We're going to talk about those coming up. But yeah, I still hold this first film in very high regard because of how terrifying it is. It is very scary it's very like interesting to have a slasher that they introduced to us with personality yes freddy krueger didn't really have that personality that he would later have in the uh, latter half of the films but like i said still this was the introduction of a slasher icon that would be a pop culture phenomenon coming in at our number two spot the silver medal to the top dog is gonna be nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, Dream Warriors, probably the most common and most popular answer for a favorite in the franchise. There's no reason why I would argue that. This is a fantastic film. Dream Warriors really has all the best elements of a Nightmare on Elm Street film. It has a really fun Freddy Krueger performance, some really great one-liners. The kills are really memorable in this film. The cast is really fun. Yes, Patricia Arquette might be not the greatest actress at this time, but we have a young Lawrence Fishburne in here. I think Heather Langenkamp's performance is better in this film than it was in the first film. So Dream Warriors really has a lot to offer. And like I said, I, there's no reason why I would fight someone having this really at the number one spot because it's one of those films that just accompanies a lot of the best elements that all the Nightmare on Elm Street films have in this franchise. But there has to be a number one, a top dog in my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street film. The one that is mine that calls to me and speaks to me the most is... Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, and this is the one that I remember watching for the first time out of all the Nightmare on Elm Street films, and Freddy's Revenge just sticks to home with me because I think, for me, when people ask me what's the scariest Nightmare on Elm Street film, it's this one. What do I think is the best Freddy Krueger performance? It's Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, and which film has the best, most relatable cast to me? It's this film, be it Jesse, Lisa, Grady, all the characters. I see a part of myself in every single one of them. So that's a reason why I have this film at number one. Like I said, Freddy's Revenge just gives me everything I want in a nightmare film and like has some, to me some of the most iconic scenes. Like when Freddy Krueger's emerging out of Jesse's chest, coming out of him for the first time. Or when Freddy Krueger's by the pool and has all the kids there and he's like, you're all my children now. Like there's just so many iconic moments and I've talked this film up to death because like I said I've done so many videos about this film so Freddy's Revenge it's no secret that it is my favorite because like I said it, it's just my Freddy film it does everything Nightmare on Elm Street did from 1984 but it just turns it up to 11 and it has Mark Patton in it probably the most iconic Scream King we've ever had. Yes, this film didn't, it had a negative effect on his career and his life at that time, but there's a really fabulous documentary called Scream Queen where Mark Patton confronts the writer of this film and has a really good journey in that documentary. So I highly recommend that as well. That's another film to you know tag along with this franchise, a great watch to do. And yeah, Freddy's Revenge, like I said, this is eight or nine times out of 10, 
this is the Nightmare on Elm Street film that I'm going to reach out to grab off of my shelf to watch because, like I said, it just offers me everything I want in the franchise. And like I said, Freddy's Revenge will always, I think, be number one. And it was really fun going through all these films, tackling all these films. And like I said, this is just my ranking, my thoughts. I would love to hear from all of you down below because there's so many. That's what's great about having a franchise that has spanned so many years is there's so many fans they have different nostalgia ties to different films, and there's different films that hold a special place in their hearts. So like I said, this is a really fun franchise to digest because Freddy Krueger is such a huge pop culture icon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed a lot of the videos coming over the or that have been coming out the last couple weeks as we've been chatting this franchise. Like I said, please let me know down below your thoughts and your ranking, but also like the video. I said that stuff did all that spiel already, but like I said, most importantly, Importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.